Welcome, Adam. Thank you so much for contributing tonight to the panel. Shepherd Mullen's been so great to us and so great to this ecosystem and building this community. I really appreciate it and I know everyone else does. Uh, so it's wonderful to have you on the panel. I was wondering what led you to become interested in the blockchain? Well, I'd love to say that it was some incredible insight that I had. Uh, maybe it was, but in 2012, I would say some of the smartest clients that I've ever had um, started getting involved in Bitcoin and blockchain technology, and they pulled me in. Uh, I have a background before being a lawyer in network engineering and computer development, and like them, it sort of blew my mind. It was a paradigm shift for how data could be managed and uh, transactions could be made to happen. Um, I started doing semiconductor development agreements and different concerted uh, currency regulation questions and just dealing with all the different legal issues that come up uh, and that it's been great uh, the does that answer the question I hope and uh, what's your vision uh, because obviously you have contact with a lot of different companies um, and seeing the possibilities of the blockchain and how it is um, going to disrupt everything and is disrupting things I was wondering what your vision is what are the possibilities do you think that we can have in the blockchain and do you think there are any um, challenges p potentially obviously legally um, initially uh, for the blockchain to have to leap through well we saw that right we saw Bitcoin and all those its potential come out and uh, get faced with because of a lot of bad public response and frankly the need for some regulation um, a lot of regulatory clouds uh, if not actions. I mean, we haven't really seen a lot of enforcement actions in the currency and digital currency space, uh, despite everything that's been going on. Is it sort of remarkable? It, it has been remarkable. And, and the truth is there hasn't been, as we look around, massive harm or the world imploding uh, so much. The, but Mt. Gox uh, really created a, a backdraft, as it were. Uh, and I found myself in meetings with investors where you're trying to describe what the regulatory hurdles are and will be for the next two years. And because they're not clear, it's very hard to invest your money. We solve the problem where we have in the United States a federal government that highly regulates uh, and then 49 states that regulate money transmission. Okay, well, that's digital currency. Any place where blockchain shows up, um, it tends to be a highly regulated area. Um, if you're looking at healthcare and data portability issues, highly regulated. You're looking at securities exchanges and what T0 and uh, Overstock has been doing, highly regulated again. And they really, the SEC has been really getting into the, the technology itself on a granular level. So, uh, so there's two forces. One is, you know, what is blockchain going to be good for? Um, and secondly, what's going to be the government response? And what will be the regulatory response? Uh, I can only say that with every, uh, with the advent of any good uh, technology, most people are wrong. I mean, if you would have, if you would have told, I think anybody in 2012 or 2013, data portability and health records are going to be one of the first things. I, I got to tell you, it wasn't on my mind. Um, and likewise, will securities exchanges be entirely on blockchain in two years? It's very, very hard to predict, despite the cost advantages. Uh, and some of the other advantages. So I, I know that's not a great answer. Um, I hope so. Thanks so much, Adam, and I'm looking forward to the panel, and thanks again for contributing. Thank you. I would say, I suppose, the one place where I really expect it to come out more, everybody does, and I, I agree, is the movement of digital assets. So, for instance, uh, one deal that we were involved in is the Royal Mint of England, actually taking their bars of gold and making them into digital tokens that will be traded on the blockchain. It's a client of ours, BitGo, that's developing that blockchain and creating that and creating a trading ability for the Chicago Merck, an ancient company very involved in commodities trading, to be able to then trade those digital assets. I just see that happening and happening more and more and more. It's just a better way to do it and gives people a novel way to either store value or to trade on those commodities. Fantastic. Thank you.